Peace of the Lord be with you. Good afternoon or evening. This is our devotion for Monday, June twentieth, um, and uh, this is coming out in the early evening. So uh, I'll follow that order. Page two ninety seven in the hymnal, and the gospel lesson for this week is from Luke chapter fourteen, verses fifteen through twenty four. And um, we'll go ahead and begin. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Joyous light of glory of the immortal Father, heavenly, holy, blessed Jesus Christ, we have come to the setting of the sun. We look to the evening light. We sing to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy of being praised with pure voices forever. O Son of God, O giver of life, the universe proclaims your glory. Amen. All right, we read our, our gospel lesson from Luke chapter 14. When one of those who reclined at table with Jesus heard these things, he said to him, Blessed is everyone who will eat bread in the kingdom of God. But Jesus said to him, A man once gave a great banquet and invited many, and at the same, uh, and at the time for the banquet he sent his servants to say to those who had been invited, Come, for everything is now ready. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said to him, I have bought a field, and I must go out and see it. Please have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to examine them. Please have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So the servant came and reported these things to his master. Then the master of the house became angry and said to his servant, Go out quickly to the streets and the lanes of the city, and bring in the poor and the crippled and the blind and the lame. And the servant said, Sir, what you commanded has been done, and still there is room. And the master said to the servant, Go out to the highway, highways and hedges, and compel people to come in, that my house may be filled. For I tell you, none of those men who are invited shall take my banquet. Taste my banquet. Let us pray. Blessed Lord Jesus Christ, through your word you call us to your eternal banquet, and we pray that you would grant us to heed your call, that you would bless us with faith that um, that receives your righteousness, that we would be clothed for your eternal kingdom, and be with us even now, that we would um, live faithfully in that call and most importantly live faithfully in the joy that we would ever look to you and to your eternal promises as you live and reign with the father and the holy spirit one god now and forever amen all right um so as we as we uh hear hear this parable um i think there there are a couple things that we we should uh should draw from it generally speaking um First of all, there is, within this, I think that there's the implicit distinction between Jew and Gentile. Um, you know, and this is going to be drawn out a little bit more in the, the epistle lesson tomorrow, so I, I, I probably won't spend as much time on it today as I will for tomorrow. But, um, but you, see this, uh, you, you, you see this a lot in the parables where Jesus is making the point that he has come, that, um, he's come for the Jews, Right, and he's inviting them to, to his kingdom, um, because they've they've fallen away in, in whatever way, and um, and so he's inviting them to his kingdom, but the the issue is that um, that they're they're not heeding the invitation, they're not heeding the call, right, and so in view of that, then he's going to extend this invitation to others that it's unexpected that they would receive it, right, and so. That's the the Jew the Jew Gentile distinction, right? He's the, the, he's come for the Jews. He's bringing this invitation to them, and uh, and and now they, there's there's rejection on their part. So he is he's carrying that invitation to, to others. Now, uh, a, another piece that we need to consider as we evaluate this is that right before the parable starts, you actually have Jesus instructing people that uh, when you give a dinner or a banquet, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors, lest they also invite you in return and be repaid. But when you give a feast, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, and you will be blessed, because they cannot repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the just. And in that, what we see is this call that Jesus gives that we would reflect his nature of loving and love the unlovable, right? And so, as he then, as he then gives this this parable, he's he's explaining that that much more, right? 
go out quickly to the streets and the lanes and bring in the poor, the, the crippled, the blind, and the lame, right? Um, you know, of course, so that is, as we kind of take the, the, the next step back, that is to understand that, um, that he, he's doing this, let's see, how, how do I say this? You know, that, that this is what he's doing when he invites us, right? That we are the poor, crippled, lame, and the blind, right? That we are those who in our sin can't repay him, right? Because they cannot repay you in verse 14. Um, we, we are the ones who cannot repay him. And he is the one then who, who invites us still to his banquet. And um, and so, so that, that we are struck by that invitation and that love and that, that mercy. Then, okay, so as, as we kind of have all of that in mind, I want to kind of, I'll read back through this again and, and we'll make a couple of, uh, couple of, of notes as we do that and, um, and, and kind of a concluding thought. So, uh, so Jesus has this, this uh, d- instruction that I was just talking about, inviting, when you, have, when you have a feast, invite those who can't repay you. And he says, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the unjust. And, and so well, there's a guy that's there and he says, hey, you know, Blessed is everyone who will eat bread in the kingdom of God. And I think this is sort of an, excuse me, I think this is sort of an interesting interjection on his part, right? Uh, you know, Jesus is talking about the resurrection. I get the impression that this guy wants to contribute something but doesn't know what to contribute. And, and you know, maybe there's, there's more to it. I should, uh, I, I should investigate that a little bit. But um, you can kind of hear him saying, oh, Jesus is saying, hey, there's going to be this blessing at the resurrection of the just. And the guy says, yeah. Blessed is everybody who's going to get to enjoy that, that bread of that kingdom, right? And that's a true statement. I mean, it's not like the guy said something false. It is. A, the thought of, of partaking in the Lord's resurrection feast is, is, a, is an extremely wonderful blessing, right? That is the foundation of our hope, and that's, that's the joy that we have. That's the, our strength in the midst of, of this life. And, uh, and so Jesus then goes into this, this, um, this banquet, though. And, and maybe, maybe, maybe what he's doing here is expanding on this to understand what that banquet is that this banquet is the uh, that those who those who eat of the bread are those who 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 don't deserve it who 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 don't have um reason that they should enjoy it right um but to, to start you know to, he gets to that point here in a second he starts though the man once gave a great banquet and invited many and at the time for the banquet he sent his servant to say to those who had been invited come for everything is now ready but they all alike began to make excuses. The first said to him, I bought a field, I must go out and see it, please have me excused. And another said, I bought five yoke of oxen, I, I go to examine them, please have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife and therefore I cannot come. The connection we can make, as I'm saying this is Jew and Gentile, uh, the connection that we can make here is that these are all legitimate excuses to n- not do things like military service, uh, for example, in, in the, the Old Testament, right? These are, these are valid excuses according to the Old Testament law. And, and it's, uh, you know, I think what Jesus is, is doing here is um, telling the Jews, don't use the law as your excuse to not <laughs> don't miss the forest for the trees, right? Don't use the law as your excuse to not to not know the Lord, right? And and we can we can easily do that. We can we can get so drawn into dotting our eyes and crossing our t's that we miss out on who the Lord really is, and so that our our relationship to God isn't isn't per se the the um, you know the, the commands. Uh, the commands instead are what we do as a reflection of the fact that Christ has called us and made us his own, right? So, so this is, uh, so we, so then when he, he says the, the servant came and reported these things to the master and the master became angry and said to the servant, go out quickly to the streets and, and lanes of the city and bring in the poor and the crippled and the blind, blind and the lame. He said, what you have commanded has been done and still there's room. And the master said to the servant, go out to the highways and hedges and compel people to come in that my house may be filled. You know, we see in this, in this instance, that this is the, as I've said before, the heart of of the Father, right? He wants, he wants people in His kingdom, and and He wants us to invite people into His kingdom, and He wants us to 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 fill this house. He wants it full, because He wants us to not miss miss the forest for the trees. He wants us to see Him for who He is as this 
this gracious God. And so the concluding thought I have with that, because I'm, I'm you know, going on long enough here, the concluding thought I have of that is then that we who are of the faith need to make sure that we don't um, either become complacent about that faith, we need to make sure that we don't become those who, who despise the Lord in view of, and in, 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 uh, in justify that despising because of his word, right? That can be easy to do. Um, and, and that, that we are, uh, you know, that we don't use, you know, our Lutheran heritage as a justification for that, for example, right? We don't use, I've always been Lutheran, I've always been been Christian, I've always, you know, that's that's not, that this is something that, that is grounded upon Christ and uh, and who he is as he, as he comes to us and has mercy, who he is as he comes to us in his forgiveness of sins, in the in the in the word, in the proclamation of that gospel, in his holy body and blood, that we don't despise those things and just rest on our faith, right? That that's maybe that's a a good way to say it. That we don't we don't rest on our faith. We rest on on Christ Himself, and uh, and as He co- promises to come to us in in word, and in, in sacrament, right? And and in those means, and and resting on those promises, right? Um, because that is where he comes and that is where he continues to invite us and where he includes us even in a foretaste of his eternal banquet as he is gracious and merciful to us. Thanks be to God. Amen. All right. um, We continue with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for the evening is at hand, and the day is past. Be our constant companion on the way. Kindle our hearts, and awaken hope among us, that we may recognize you as you are revealed in the scriptures, and in the breaking of the bread. Grant this for your name's sake. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.